Hello and welcome to this video. This is a video, the first video, in fact, in our little series here for Reddit opening of the week. Beating or playing, beating is a bit optimistic, but it will happen sometimes. Playing against um, offbeat openings for white. Yeah, offbeat meaning those um, rare moves like b4, g4, b3, knight c3 and so on. In this video we'll be talking about the move 1b4, the so-called Sokolski opening, sometimes also called the Polish opening, or the most colorful name would be the orangutan, which I probably mispronounce. Um, in Germany it sounds totally different, so <laughs> in German it sounds totally different. Yeah, 1b4. Um, with all those rare moves we can ask ourselves how bad is it really? Well, b4 isn't great, but it also not um, it's not disastrous for white. Um, white weakens the queen side quite a bit with b4 and doesn't really help that much in development. Um, a positive side of 1b4 is that, or well, let's say, Something that at least is not going wrong for white is the king safety. Yeah, moves like f4 weaken the king or g4 weaken the king, uh, which b4 doesn't. So if black is playing some kind of normal setup, he will probably be equalizing, but nothing much more. Um, there are a couple of good replies. Anything kind of healthy would work, but my recommendation is quite clearly the move e5. Even if you are not a 1e4 player, I would still strongly advise to play that move because it um, leads to the most fluent piece play and in many cases white will have real difficulties out of the opening if he is not very precise. Um, also it's important um, against all of those rare lines to play something that is easy to remember because well, you never get them on the board, or close to never. I think I never faced the move one before in tournament chess. And once, uh, sorry, once, exactly once, <laughs> which is like 20, 25 years ago or something like that. So it's rare. And um, you should um, have something, maybe look at something once, like this video. Yes, to have some brief idea what to do, and then just um, go for that. Don't worry much about details that you will rarely need. Anyway, it usually continues with bishop b2, white attacks the pawn. Sometimes white players try to just uh, protect before it is hanging after all, after which, um, yeah, black just um, can occupy the center with d5. Yeah, like bishop b2, bishop d6, and the general setup is knight to f6, queen e7, castles, possibly c6, something like that. You don't need much more. You take the center and you're happy. Yeah, white is not worse, let's say, but but close to it. Yeah, black's got the center. <clears throat> what does white have? Bishop b2 is by far the more common move. And they can also go b5, by the way, but this is taking, yeah, neglecting the center uh, a bit to the extreme. So bishop b2 seems the most sensible move. Here black has also tried a couple of moves, even some very unnatural stuff like f6, for example, a move that I don't understand at all. I mean, I do understand the idea. Yeah, you cover a, cover this and attack here, but I really see a no point in wasting time with weakening moves like that. Just develop stuff. Bishop takes b4. It develops the bishop, we take a pawn. Yeah, white is um, basically forced to take on e5 here. Um, some people have tried f4, <laughs> really wacky, but um, it has some points. Yeah, for example, black shouldn't take as uh, bishop g7, queen h4, Check. this kind of thing is, a, is an awful mess and it's not clear at all, surprisingly at all. Yeah, so after f4, just go d6, cover that pawn and develop next. If white is um, taking this, for example, you just develop just similar to the main line, actually, just that the D file is open. D pawn is exchanged for F pawn, which is pretty terrible for white. I mean, what about this king? So F4 is real rubbish. So white takes on E5. And this is the typical structure that you get. You have traded E pawn against B pawn, 
which you might think is not so bad for white, huh? flank pawn against center pawn, but the open e file, the half open e file is actually, yeah, it gives blacks tempi and very nice development. Knight f6, of course, and here white has um, played a couple of moves, but they mostly lead to the same thing. Um, white plays knight f3, e3, and very often c4. Those moves, they kind of fit well together. White needs to develop the king side and c4 to get some pawn in the center. Sometimes white also voluntarily retreats back to b2 in one of the next moves. So I'm, I'm just going with one move order here, but it is pretty, um, yeah, there are, there are alternative uh, ways to do things. Um, for example, um, white can start, as we said, like with c4. Black is always doing the same thing. Castling, white plays whatever, knight f3, and you go rook e8. This is the thing to remember. Castles, rook e8, and in the next couple of moves, <clears throat> we go d5 and c5. If white plays the move a3, black can, I mean, we have alternatives, but I always um, felt like, um, even bishop f8 is not bad. Yeah? The bishop is very safe there on f8. And you still go d5, c5. Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> and knight c6. Yeah, this is the thing. Just develop naturally and quickly. Um, let's, as a main line, take the move um, e3. Um, castles, as we said. Knight f3. Rook e8. And this is the, the standard thing. If we are attacked, we can go all the way back to f8. Or to e7 for that matter, so also not bad. To be honest, I don't know much more than that. And whenever I get before, which is blitz games, um, I have good positions and I don't worry so much. But it's good to know. This setup is a little bit more aggressive than, let's say, anything based on 1d5 or yeah, something something less ambitious, let's say. Um, yeah, so how does this continue here? We can look at a couple of um, moves, some, to some positions to get an idea what happens. This does not mean that you have to learn all that stuff. It just helps to support, um, yeah, to, to helps a little bit if you get it on the board to have seen things beforehand. Bishop e2, for example, black will go d5. Let's say c4 for white to attack the center, and we go c5. I <clears throat> always like to use that pawn to fight for, for the center a little bit. Yeah, let's say takes, takes, castles, knight c6. Yeah, it's no big deal that this bishop is out there. It looks at important squares. Bishop b2 back and bishop f5, for example. Yeah, black has a very nice development. Yeah. White has two center pawns, black has none, but note that the center is not mobile at all and it rather looks like black is going to centralize everything and puts pressure on those center pawns. This is the common problem of this opening, that black will get such a big quick development that you cannot do much with your center here. Yeah, It's, it's not going to yeah, rush forward yeah, and crush black, it's just mostly a weakness. Um, pretty typical way how it how it might um, uh, progress. Um, what else? Now here, white also can can castle. And what do we do? It's it's the same thing all over again. Just c five. Yeah, and white now it's not so easy. You cannot develop that knight. Is the thing. I mean, theoretically you can, but. Is that a good position after knight bd7? This is this is out there, yeah. Bishop g3. Black can't even think of taking and yeah, play against the big pawns. So it doesn't quite add up. Usually white returns here. And then again, knight c6. Let's say d3. Yeah, so just simple, simple moves. Knight bd2 and possibly d4. This is something to consider carefully, but very often black can just do that. I probably doesn't fit well with bishop f5. I was just putting those moves out. It's not like I looked up um, any uh, big game references. Here black is just fine. 
there are also some pretty aggressive things or pretty drastic things that can happen if white is not um, yeah not paying any attention we can look at a couple of things so if we start with c4 black goes again d5 uh, you can also start with this if you like but this is a little bit more aggressive in a way because we don't need c5 in all cases um yeah white takes yeah if um, white is uh, going back voluntarily for example black can go for c5 again if he likes knight c6 trying to go for d4 something that we have seen earlier that kind of motif it just if you have seen this you will easily work it out over the board you don't need to learn any precise moves so c4 d5 takes takes and um yeah now probably it's wisest for white uh, to just go back and we see that the development here is excellent for black yeah i mean we've got castle the rook is on half open file those pieces are aggressively posted and white only has two pieces out and is two moves away from castling bishop b2 as i said it's the most uh, the wisest choice there are a couple of things that uh, lose straight away for example uh, a move like knight c3 for example black is punishing with rook takes e5 wow yeah and this is close to winning for black i mean white can can do crazy things like this but ultimately check it doesn't work Black is safe now, yeah. Knight is hanging, and black is two pieces up for a rook. A pretty simple tactic. So knight c3 is bad. Um, this looks completely normal. Thing is, it loses again due to that. And white has to give that knight up. Yeah. If he goes f4. Knight takes e3 is a big disaster. Queen b3 Check. takes and yeah, white is completely, completely falling apart there. Many ways for white <laughs> to go wrong. Um, yeah, something else that white can try. I have a couple of um, examples here to, to, to check. Bishop c4 has also been tried. Bishop g4, bishop b2, and uh, in this position, black can play normal moves, uh, knight c6, for example, but uh, he may also choose the sacrifice. Check. King f2, and black can even check. sacrifice this and shoot for the check. check. And check. it seems that while looking very nice, it is just a draw if white is. If white is very careful but white can lose yeah it's not like it's it's easy for example if white steps to uh, g1 then bishop h3 will lead to a very dangerous attack black is having this idea this is also hanging yeah i mean very dangerous stuff but black has sacrificed the rook yeah it's it's not a direct win or anything it's just very dangerous the drawing line is king e2 even though Black, of course, can try to uh, attack. Yeah, I mean, in some in a blitz game, for example, I mean, you can easily play this and and gamble with that. And the computer gives draws, but uh, I mean, <laughs> Black's position is just uh, menacing. Yeah, in, in, especially in, in shorter time controls. So many um, aggressive possibilities. This this idea of sacrificing on e3 is a very uh, common one that um yeah that you can should should keep in mind yeah especially as i said shorter time control sometimes even if it does not work objectively in uh, yeah, it's super dangerous so takes takes bishop b2 this is um probably the relatively relatively safest um yeah here black has a couple of uh, of good moves for example, um, you can just develop 
with uh, knight c6, um, bishop f5, the move c5 that set up that I also had mentioned earlier is also possible yeah, for knight c6, bishop out, and so on. Um, the most aggressive move, however, is directly related to black's superior development. You can shoot for knight f4, that's an interesting way to play. Yeah, trying to hinder white from further developing and possibly jumping on the d3 square. Um, not easy at all for white to handle, not easy at all. Um, yeah, what can white do? What they tried a lot is knight e5, after which black has a very promising continuation. Um, queen g5, it's pretty strong. Yeah, black is attacking this twice, attacking g2, and if white takes, I mean, probably he has to, if, if he white like goes back we go here and we just have gotten those aggressive queen moves for free so takes and black just recaptures yeah and the e file that looks pretty bad white has to now block the e file somehow there's no i mean something like this is not going to work yeah after knight c6 you're just in too big too big trouble note that this check is also pretty pretty nice but maybe you can can prove there right yeah black can also take here by the way that's an interesting idea because how is white saving his queen for example or something like that we check. can happily check Check. <laughs> Some crazy complications. Now you don't need to learn this line, just there are a couple of interesting crazy things that you can check out over the board, but the attack is very, very dangerous. Just uh, nice to maybe keep in mind knight f4, queen g5, yeah? and um, black has a has a great attack. Um, knight e5 was mostly designed to attack the knight and cover d3, uh, not the only move, of course. Um, a3, for example, is something. Um, this is something to avoid, yeah? After queen a4, there are two pieces hanging. But black can step back to d6 and maintain his um, pressure. Yeah, it's not, this is not terrible for white, but he's under pressure quite clearly. So knight a4 is an aggressive choice, but as, as I mentioned, there's nothing wrong with playing c5, knight c6, bishop f5. Just develop things and use pieces against um, the central pawns that, that white that white has. Um, yeah, all in all, 1b4 isn't particularly dangerous, but it is um, something that black cannot refute. Yeah, it's not terrible, like, like 1g4, for example. 1g4 is really terrible where black will get an advantage with good play. This is not possible with 1b4 if white plays decent chess after he has taken this liberty, let's say, <laughs> to uh, to play 1b4. However, there are a couple of options as we have seen or a couple of things that might happen to white if he's not very um, circumspect afterwards. Yeah, this sacrifice on e3, they can be very, very dangerous. But in general, there's nothing wrong, as I said, if black just gets with, with normal development. Something like this, for example, knight c6, castles, bishop f5, this kind of thing. This is what I usually do if I don't see something really great, yeah, a sacrifice that immediately catches my attention. And it's not like, as I said, you get it on the board quite often. B4 is pretty rare. So it doesn't make much sense to, to study any uh, peace sacrifice line, whatever, in much depth. It's just good to know that these ideas are there. And if you happen to get it on the board, then you can still take a couple of minutes in a, in a, in a real um, classical time control game and figure it out. And in Blitz, just develop or just sack and have fun. I mean, those, those two things. 
it doesn't make sense to invest much time there at home. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the first uh, video here, how to play against uh, one before. There are many ways, but this is one way I think that is uh, easy to learn and in many cases will give you a very good game. Thanks for watching.